Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for attending my talk today. My name is Farzad Rashidi. I am the lead innovator and co-founder at Respana and uh, director of marketing at Vizme. Today, we're going to talk about how to scale your organic traffic from zero to over one million in monthly organic traffic. There's lots of information to cover, so I'm going to go ahead and jump straight in just to kind of give you guys a quick little background and a little bit of a backstory behind Respana. For some of you who haven't heard of Vizme, our parent company, uh, Vizme is an all-in-one brand content creation platform. So you'll be able to create any sort of branded presentations, infographics, social graphics, etc. Um, and the way we sort of get all of our customers is through organic search and SEO. We do very little in paid ads and outreach as far as cold sales goes. And just to kind of give you some sense of scale, Vizme is now uh, over 10 million active users. We're doubling that year over year. And that's thanks to our about 2 million in monthly organic traffic that comes to our website on a monthly basis. Now, uh, we are that, that sort of story led us to the creation of Respana, which was a, a secret sauce for about a year and a half at Vesme. It was a platform we developed internally to help us with streamlining the entire average process we had for link building and sort of pouring the gasoline on the fire when it comes to our organic traffic. And, uh, and basically, I shifted away from my role at Vizme now focus on our new product, Respondent, which I'm going to tell you a little bit more about. But you guys aren't here to talk about our products. What we want to learn about today is mainly how to go and build the right site structure. That's the first thing I'm going to talk about, uh, which sort of building the foundations for uh, you know, building organic traffic. And then afterwards, we're going to be talking about how to create content pieces, how to build landing pages. And last but not least, we're going to talk a little bit about content promotion and techniques you guys can use to build backlinks to your website and grow your organic traffic. So first things first, let, let's talk a little bit about your site structure. So think about What's the first thing people do normally when they're looking for a new solution? So say if you guys are a potential Vizme customer and you're looking for a, uh, say, an infographics offer, what's the first thing you do? Normally, folks go and look up on Google infographics offer, infographic maker, right? And normally you ignore all the ads as a, uh, oh, there goes Vizme. <laughs> ignore all the ads as a user. That's at least what I do. And go straight to the organic search results. And that's how you would normally find a solution like ours. Now, getting to this point is quite difficult because if you guys take a look here, there's about 43 million search results for this target keyword. Now, I would say out of these 43 million, at least you know, 1% or less are, um, are going to be decent websites that have, you know, a good amount of content on a website and they're not spammy sites. So uh, that, that leaves us with, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of uh, remaining websites. Now, how would you go from the 100,000 site to the top 10 search result with basically take more than 95 to 99 percent of the clicks. And the way we kind of sort of get ourselves up here is by creating what we call topical authority around our website. So we want to make sure that Google knows that our domain, in this case, Vizme.co, is an authoritative source when it comes to infographics. And not only just that, but also if you go and look up, for example, presentation software or any other one of our target main keywords, you would see that Vizme would normally pop up at the top. So the way we sort of get these landing pages or what we call uh, sales pages up in the rankings is by a quite a simple structure. So step one, it's the first figuring out what are some of the keywords that you guys are trying to target, right? So if you have a cleaning website and, and you, you you know match people with cleaners, then you want to look for like carpet cleaning. That's probably your target keyword, right? So for ourselves, for Vizme, it would be infographic software, uh, presentation software. For Respana, it would be link building software, right? Now, once so we identify those parent keywords, then we go and create what we call these landing pages for our target keywords, which means that we just create a sales page. It's like, all right, this is our software. It works very well. This is what it does. Go create an account, right? It's pretty much the gist of it. But this bears very little uh, value when it comes to um, uh, creating topical authority for your website. So what we do at Vizme is that on, 
on an ongoing basis, our team actually creates what we call, uh, or, or basically for each and every single one of these parent keywords, we go ahead and create a silo on our blog. Now, a silo is just a fancy word for saying just creating a category on your website and consistently creating content pieces at the very top of the funnel that answer questions about that particular topic. So when it comes to infographics, we create, a, uh, for example, a blog post about how to create an infographic layout or, for example, um, um, you know, uh, infographic icons. And the process of figuring out what exactly to write about is a quite a scientific process. So I've actually created a little ebook. It's free. You guys can go ahead and download it if you just Google VizMe marketing strategy. It should show up, show up at the top here. Uh, so uh, this ebook, it's called uh, Marketing Strategies. We used to bootstrap as you know, 4 million users. We released that back in 2019. So now it's over 10. I think we're, we broke the 11 million actually today. But anyhow, uh, so once once you guys take a look at the ebook, I talk about keyword prioritization. So we all know what our parent keywords are. That's normally that doesn't require a whole lot of research. If you have a business, you know, normally know what you do. Now, the second step of that is so I understand what are some of the other questions that people who are looking or potentially would be your customers are searching for on Google actively. And the way we would do that is that it is a process of identifying um, our, our opportunity keywords. And an opportunity keyword to me uh, means that we want to identify and prioritize keywords that have high potential organic traffic, so high number of clicks, people are actively searching for that keyword, low in keyword difficulty or low competition, so you don't want to go out head and head with some of the big brands in the market right straight away, maybe down the line you could, but you, we want to prioritize keywords that are easier to rank for, but at the same time have high commercial intent. So that way we've defined it as high in CPC or cost per click. So if advertisers are willing to bet for that keyword, it's most likely that those keywords are uh, pretty valuable when it comes to sales. So the, the process of prioritizing those keywords is quite simple. So I made this little quick formula, it's called the opportunity score, and, and it's just one over keyword difficulty, which is you know, prior, given a higher number to keywords that don't have as high of a difficulty, multiplied by the number of clicks, which is an indication of a potential traffic, and multiplied by the cost per click. And that process is sort of just enabling you guys to, to prioritize them. So for example, Say if I write a, uh, or I'm, I'm going to be using Ahrefs to demonstrate these examples. If you guys are using any other SEO tools like SEMrush, Moz, Ubersuggest, some of the free tools out there, uh, you're more than welcome to either Tomato Tomato. They all do the same job. But basically, when I when I run my parent keyword through content, uh, excuse me, through Keyword Explorer, then I, I normally in Ahrefs I normally go under search suggestions and I pull up all the other keywords that have uh, basically relevancy to my parent keyword here. So like, for example, we got infographic template examples. But there's about 239 of those. <laughs> so I need a system for myself to prioritize them and start writing content for specific one of, uh, for specific keywords. Now, the way you want to do that is actually go ahead and export these keywords out of Ahrefs. Normally, I have a good rule of th thumb also before you do that is that I actually set the DR of the website as the max for keyword difficulty. So keyword difficulty is a metric from zero to 100 and has nothing to do with uh, the DR on your website, which is an indication of your domain authority. But say if you have a domain authority of 84, I normally try to put that as a max number of keyword difficulty of 84. Or if you have a new website that's DR 30, I normally put the 30 as the keyword difficulty max. Now there's no scientific reason behind it. It's just a good rule of thumb that I've, uh, that I've set for our content team. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is that you don't want to uh, go after keywords that um, have too high of a keyword difficulty once you're starting out and you want to sort of stay, stay within your league and then uh, and expand from there. So I normally take out some of the keyword difficulties. So VizMe has a DR84, so I normally put that as the max key, keyword difficulty. And then uh, now I know, okay, these are keywords that are within my reach. Now let's try to figure out. So I broke uh, the top 100 that I, that I could potentially work with. And then I export this out. But then again, we still have 100 uh, plus keywords that we could target. So the way we would do that is dropping it into that opportunity score formula, uh, which is uh, a sim simple calculation here that you could do in a Google spreadsheet. Now, this, this 
uh, score in and out of itself doesn't mean anything. It's just a metric for us to be able to compare keywords within the same parent keyword uh, between each other. So it's not among each other. It's not something that you could use, oh, oh this keyword has an opportunity score of a thousand, so it must be high, right? So this is just a way for us to be able to uh, kind of get a sense of uh, how valuable that keyword would, uh, for us would be. So, for example, one of the keyword number four is uh, infographic design here. And, and our team of, has obviously created a guide on infographic design and how uh, you can create an infographic if you're not a designer. Now, step one, obviously, when it comes to content creation is not to just focus and stuff keywords in here. You guys want to actually, once you, once you do your SEO research to find these keywords, then you want to just roll it out to the writer. And normally I actually do, uh, people also ask on Google as well and try to see what are some of the uh, questions that people are asking. So like what is an infographic, why it's used, et cetera. And then put together a little outline for myself. So uh, I take a look at the number of backlinks that's needed for that target keyword, questions to answer from people also ask, and also keywords to include are the long tail variations of that. And, and again, you, you want to leave it a little open-ended for the writer to be able to write pieces of content because you don't want to sound robotic. You want to be writing for a user. But once you have that uh, kind of sort of basis for your content, you want to let the writer write out, uh, you know, write from the heart, right? So don't, don't push too hard when it comes to keyword frequency uh, because that just t uh, makes the content junk. I don't have a better way to put it. So you want to make sure that you really create pieces of content that really add value and the reason why I say that is because even if you put together a, a content that's keyword stuffed and, and, and it robot, sounds robotic, even if you go and build backlinks to it and you have a good site and you put it up in the rankings, if people exit out of it keep, once they come into it and they, they don't spend enough time on it and the bounce rate's high, then I just tells Google that, hey, this is probably not the best quality content, right? So that then you get pushed down anyway. So uh, all of our effort here would not be worthwhile if you don't spend the time to actually create these quality pieces of content. So hire good writers. All right, now once we have these pieces of content created, here's another trick that we do. We actually, if you, if you take a look somewhere at the top, normally, uh, let me try to find exactly where the uh, infographic software landing page. So I can go ahead and take a look at the inspect here. Perfect. So you see here that on this page, we got this link to an infographic maker. And if you actually take a look at the link, this actually takes us directly to the landing page that I showed you guys earlier. So each and every single one of these content pieces in each silo. Uh, so when you go to our, uh, you know, infographic silo, they all have an internal link to a main landing page or a sales page. So then what we're going to do, so again, just to kind of paint you guys a picture. So we have our parent keywords that we selected. Each one has a sales landing page and each one has a category on our blog that we write quality pieces of content. We use that formula to create these highly educational pieces of content. And each one has an internal link to our landing page. Now that's about it as far as the site structure, right? Not rocket science, quite simple to do. Everybody can do it. Now, once we have these content pieces created, which I sort of incorporated that inside the site structure building part, uh, then now the biggest issue or the biggest hurdle on our way is going to be actually getting these content pieces rankings in Google. Now, the way we would want to do so is by building links and not just by going on Fiverr and you know, paying some random person to build or buy a hundred links to your website. No. What we want to do is identify relevant quality sites in our space and, and identify a relevant page on our website and incentivize them to actually link back to our educational piece on, the, uh, on our website. Now, what that's going to do is that over time, once you build backlinks to these content pieces, or at, basically they, that through these internal links to our landing pages, you're hitting two birds with one stone. One, you're, you're helping your content pages to start ranking for your target keyword. So you're getting some traffic at the top of the funnel. And at the same time, those backlinks or external links to these content pages are actually helping uh, through these internal links that pass on the link equity to your landing pages. And they're helping your, your landing pages start ranking in Google as well. So that way you're getting traffic both at the top of the funnel and nurturing it down the funnel. So that's pretty much the process of uh, what we call on-page SEO in short, in, in about 14 minutes, right? Uh, so once we have these pieces of content, 
Now that's where the real work begins. And that is actually making sure that we incentivize other people and get them to link back to our website, which is quite difficult, especially when it comes to uh, quality of those sites that you're getting links from. So let me go ahead and walk you guys through how we were able to do that. So that's where Responder comes in. Now, just a little disclaimer, guys, that you don't need Responder to run these outreach campaigns. A lot of people are doing link building and, you know, some some aren't using our platform and that's totally fine. You guys can just do this manually by yourself. And as we go through the process, I'm going to actually introduce some of the free tools or some of the external other tools than ours that you could duct tape together to to build a process around. And as I said, if you guys are especially just starting out, you don't need to pay for all these fancy tools. <laughs> so uh, uh, hopefully I don't come across as a salesperson here, uh, but I, I think the responder, the, the main thing that it helps with is that it actually puts that process into perspective and, and sort of gives you a streamlined way of creating a average campaign. All right. So now that we have piece of, uh, now that we have our piece of content created, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and actually bring this piece right over here in my browser so I can show you guys on the same screen. Now, ideally, normally there's two different ways that I could run an outreach campaign for this blog post. Again, there's tons and tons of different link building strategies. I like these two um, strategies that work the best and have been the most fruitful over the years. One is what we call the anchor text strategy, which is identifying other relevant blog posts on authoritative websites in our space that are not directly competing with our target keywords. So in this case, infographic design means that if they're talking about the same topic, they're gonna to be a competing post, they're never gonna to link to us. So we wanna find non-competing blog articles that are relevant enough that they've mentioned our target keyword somewhere in their body. So they've mentioned it, but they didn't really dive deep. So let me walk you through how you'd be able to identify that. So in response to what I like to do normally is to go ahead and uh, start a little what we call a campaign. And here, we would like to, let, let me go ahead and just call this infographic design. And a campaign response is just basically putting this uh, process of prospecting, finding the right contacts, or sending emails under one roof. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, you guys don't have to use uh, response engine for this, you can just go ahead and use the good old Google for this. All right, so what I like to do normally as a first step is set the uh, search as web search, which basically turns this search bar into what similar to a Google search. So we actually are plugged into Bing because it gives us a lot more search results. We're adding Google soon. But what I like to use is, is these advanced operators, which I'm sure you guys have might have heard of them or used them before. And basically, uh, what I can, what I normally use three of these advanced operators. First one is in URL blog. So we want to make sure that we um, narrow down our searches to blog articles. I don't want to reach out to Forbes, for example, or some of the news sites. I want to or e-commerce websites. I want to make sure that I'm reaching out to blog articles that in their body they happen to mention a target keyword hours. In this case, designing an infographic, right? And instead of infographic design, I normally pick designing an infographic because it's something that fits in a sentence better. So I think we can find a lot better opportunities that way. But if we search that, it's just going to bring up other articles about infographic design, right? So which is, which is not what we want. We don't want competing articles. So then I can tell Responder not entitle uh, infographic or infographics. I normally do singular and plural uh, just because uh, it doesn't distinguish them. So what, what this query means is that, hey, I want to find other blog articles that happen to mention designing an infographic somewhere in the body, but not in their title infographic. So if I take a look, there's a ton of opportunities here. One of them is from uh, one of our good partners, Ryan Robinson, who is actually a... Um, he is actually one of our affiliates on the business side. And he's got this blog post about 10 blog post templates. So the article is about blog post template and it's not a direct competitor to infographic design. But if you actually go ahead and take a look at this and the, the body of the article, if I look up designing an infographic, there you go. So now here, if you guys see, this is a very short mention 
So they've mentioned designing an infographic here, but didn't really dive in deep into the topic and the overall topic of the page is irrelevant to this. So what we want to do is to reach out to Ryan and say, hey, Ryan, came across your post about blog post templates and notice that you happen to mention designing an infographic, but didn't really dive into the topic or link to another resource. Our team actually just happened to create a very comprehensive uh, resource on infographic design that I think would make a nice addition to your post. And if you were kind to give us a mention here, I'm more than happy to do X, Y, and Z for you. Now, Google advertises against uh, having to offer any sort of incentive in your pitches, but in, it's been in our experience that if you don't offer anything, just ask people to do something for you, that normally bears very little fruit. So I do recommend uh, offering some sort of incentive, but normally sites that you want to reach out to and work with are sites that don't accept cash. And we actually automatically block list any, blacklist any sort of websites that accept cash for links because if they accept cash from you they're accepting cash from everyone so at some point they're going to get caught that's that link is going to get nullo, uh, nullified and you don't want to deal with it so what i'm trying to say is that you want to work with websites that don't normally care about your money normally these are uh, other you know ways that you could incentivize them for example a social share if you guys have a large social following if you have a large newsletter including your newsletter drive some traffic to their site uh, if you have a SaaS product, offer them a free subscription to your SaaS. If you have uh, a guest post that you're writing on another piece of content, you can reference one of their articles in that article. Uh, so you offer them some sort of links. So what I'm trying to say, it has to be a mutually beneficial collaboration. Now, another way you could also build links to a particular piece of content. So we could go ahead and select a few of these articles here to add to our campaign or just select them all. And basically, another way we, we normally do this is by importing using, uh, for example, using one of our tools like Ahrefs, Moz, or ICMrush, we actually go through Keyword Explorer and we just look up our target keyword, which in this case is infographic design, and see what are some of the other blog posts that are already ranking for that keyword. So if you take a look at the SERP, um, uh, basically, uh, metrics here. So if I can take a look, for example, it's a Vingage article or it's a Canva article, and they're talking about, say, for example, or they, they have like 400 backlinks. I know we normally uh, take a look at this and, and, and see, okay, we can filter it down to one link per domain and potentially do follow backlinks. And and normally we extract these and you know remove anything that has a DR of less than 30. That's normally good rule of thumb when it comes to getting rid of some of the junk links. And normally that leaves you with like, you know, 40 or 50, um, basically a good links that you could potentially reach out to. And then normally what you want to do is to go ahead and extract these search results out of Ahrefs. And that gives you a list, something like this, which is going to be mainly uh, consist of URLs. And then uh, you, you can just import these URLs, drag and drop them into Respondent. So you don't actually have to do any sort of digging. You can just drop these URLs in here. And the only field that you need to map is just the URL field. You don't really need to do any sort of research. And again, as I said, you don't need to use Respana. You can just manually go through each and every single one of these URLs. Uh, but it's important that you guys do the prospecting, as I mentioned. So now, second step of the campaign is building an email sequence. Now here, you want to put together a template saying that, hey, X, Y, and Z it came across your um, uh, you know, blog post. Notice the guy that you guys mentioned X, Y, and Z. Uh, so the template goes something like, hey, regarding your topic post, and it goes, hi, first name, happy day of the week, and just finished reading your post and the title of the article, and I wanted to share a few thoughts. Firstly, stuck with me the day you said, and we add a level of human touch to the email, which I'm gonna show you how that will work in the last step of the campaign. Also, I noticed you guys mentioned designing an infographic in the article, but didn't really dive into the topic, or link to another resource, we just released a brand new guide about infographic design, which I think would make a great addition. Want to take a look? I got you. And as a thank you, I'm more than happy to share your article with a half a million newsletter subscribers and bring some extra traffic to your site, which is you can you know, obviously replace that with your own incentive, whatever that may be. Um, and regardless, I'll be a frequent reader. Just subscribe to your newsletter. Keep up the great work, right? So basically what we were trying to do here to uh, offer a personalized pitch and with an incentive to a very relevant site in your space. So that's really what golden pillars of outreach are like, is, is that you don't want to uh, come across as a jerk who's just you know uh, spamming the world and asking them to do something for them without anything in return. 
Now the next step of the campaign, this is where things get interesting. So normally if you're reaching out to Ryan Robinson's blog, you, you already know they would want to reach out to him directly. But uh, normally uh, if, if there's another website, say for example, in this case, if I'm if I were to reach out to this article, say Visme was in our own company, it was another external blog post that I wanted to write. We have a process for figuring out who would be the right person to reach out, because that's also something that a lot of people miss. They normally just either contact support or company generic email, which normally goes straight to trash. So what you want to do is to first understand who is the writer of this article. And in this case, Chloe, Wes is a, is the writer, but we got to check whether she, uh, she works at the company or not. So we got to check whether Chloe is actually a current employee at Visme or not. Which in this case she is. She's actually one of our great colleagues and and, and content managers. Hey Chloe, if you're watching this, uh, so in this case I would want to directly find Chloe's email address and want to reach out to her directly. She would be the right person. But say if the information about the writer wasn't present on the page, or that person, say Chloe, wasn't an employee of Disney. God forbid. Uh, so in that case, what we want to do is to hit up LinkedIn or some other data sources trying to find w who would be the right person at Visme to reach out to. So a content manager or a writer, editor, uh, SEO person, someone relevant in their marketing team. And get their email address using Hunter or some other other free, uh, you know email finder tools. And then you want to make sure that you verify those emails uh, to see whether they're uh, deliverable so you can use tools like never bounce or zero bounce to verify those emails and then you put them all on a spreadsheet you export and then you can import it into an email average tool so <laughs> that would be the process normally how you would want to do this manually now in responder we have something called a, a contact automation where you can tell the platform what to do and it will go in and take care of it for you on autopilot so really all you got to do is just to answer two simple questions and let it do the dirty work for you question number one is should respondents have opportunities to the writers of these articles? And we say yes, but only if the authors work at the company. All right, what if the writer doesn't work there? Or, or say, for example, uh, there's no author information on the page. We're like, that's fine. Just go find one or two people at the company who match this position and seniority criteria. So someone who has the words like content, SEO, marketing, etc., in their job title in that order of preference. And now you really, all you gotta do is just to go ahead and run this baby on autopilot. You don't have to touch a thing. You can just click on yes, email when it's done. You go grab a beer, you come back as soon as the campaign is concluded or the, the automation is complete. So I'm gonna pause this video and come back when the automation actually runs out. All right, so for the sake of time, I went ahead and paused the automation here. So now once we let the automation run to completion, every single one of these articles is gonna have their own pre-assigned contact information. So I can actually go ahead and click on get contact, get the contact information for each and every single one of these guys. So for example, in this case, the Ryan Robinson article responded went ahead and found the direct contact information. And then the next step and the last step of the campaign is deep personalization. Now this is something that I highly recommend folks to do, which Nobody really seems to listen to me, <laughs> but obviously lots of people are doing link building and outreach and people are sick and tired of getting spam. So uh, we wanna make sure that we imply to the person that, hey, we've sat down, done our research, done our homework, and this is not another spammy outreach email we were just sending to everyone. So what Responder does is that he actually shows you a quick preview of all the um, basically pitches that you're sending out and, and the, all the variables are already pre-filled and, and you get the same flexibility as manual average, but obviously the sending action is automated. Now, what it also does is that it actually helps you uh, to uh, go ahead and it reads the article and pulls five important sentences from the article and you'll be able to actually go ahead and mention something that they have mentioned in the article. Like for example, they've mentioned to include a section after intro that gives the before picture, yada, yada, yada. So I could say something like, oh, first they stuck with me when you said to include a section after interaction, right? So that just uh, it adds a little human touch to your emails implying to the person that it's a personalized email and you don't have to sit down and actually read through the whole article. Responder gives you some snippets to work with here. And then all you're gonna do afterwards is just to go ahead and launch the campaign and send you forget it. Start sending emails from your own email account and automatically follows up and as soon as someone replies, ends up in your inbox, you take it over from there. Now, this is something that, again, as I mentioned, the whole process is summarized in Responder. You don't have to use our platform, but, uh, but 
if you were to do this manually, you want to make sure that you still spend the time to personalize these pitches. Now, one more thing, this is normally not where we stop. So say, for example, say Brian responds and say, hey, Farza, thank you for reaching out. Sure thing, I added your link you, and, and we include his um, blog post in our newsletter, so it's a win-win. Now, normally what we do is that we actually run his website through either Ahrefs or if you guys are using other tools like SEMrush or Moz and take a look at their organic search and we wanna identify what are some of the other keywords that their competitors are ranking for, but they aren't. So I can use this feature called Content Gap. I'm not sure whether SEMrush has that feature, but normally what I like to do is to run a couple of the websites that he competes with or on an organic traffic level and tell or ask Ahrefs to find me all the keywords that those um, websites are ranking for but they aren't and I can actually uh, get my keyword search a little more broad oh, let me see here let me let me double check the websites all right I tried with another website that they compete with because apparently one of those sites was was too small so basically once you run a couple of the websites that they compete with on an organic level then Ahrefs will automatically pull up the keywords that Ryan doesn't work rank for but then the problem here is that a lot of these keywords are going to be generic so what you want to do is to run that intersect at two targets so that you tell Ahrefs that only one keywords that both of those websites are ranking for. Now it brings up a lot, uh, brings up basically a lot of um, keywords that are potentially relevant for Ryan as well. So I want to actually take a screenshot of this, send it to Ryan, and say, "Hey Ryan, thank you very much for adding a link. We included your article in our newsletter. By the way, I was taking a look at Ahrefs or SEMrush, and I noticed that you guys." Uh, a couple of your competitors like First Sight Guide and Blog Tyrant are ranking for the keyword best lifestyle blogs and I happen to actually have a writer in house who is big into lifestyle blogs and he has actually a, quite a few that are his favorite. We are more than happy to contribute a blog post to your site covering that keyword for you. What do you say? Majority say yes because we already have a foot in the door. We've already built a relationship now. Had we had already reached out to Ryan and said, hey, can I publish a guest post on your site? He would have definitely said no. But now that we've done a transactional link exchange that's a mutually beneficial collaboration and then slipped in the guest post after, then that helps gives us a much higher chance. Now, once we have a guest post there, now we actually have the opportunity to control the outgoing links from that post. So we do normally include links to directly to our landing pages. So we don't only use the middleman approach, getting links only to blog posts from our guest posts. We actually do include one or uh, two links to our landing pages directly, which obviously are helpful. But also we don't stop there. So after we've done the guest post, then we hit up Ryan to say, hey Ryan, thank you so much for you guys publishing the guest post, by the way, now that we've broke bread together, we're, we've already done a link exchange, we've already done a guest post together. What do you say that we partner up? I'm sure you guest post on some other websites. We do the same like we did with you. Why don't we just go ahead and partner up together, put together a little Google spreadsheet. Anytime I'm writing a guest post, then I reference some of your articles on it, if it makes sense. And you guys do the same for us. So now over time you're building this network of these partners and you don't need a whole lot of them. You know, you get 10 of these partners, half of them are probably gonna be inactive. So you have a handful of good partners. And every time you publish a guest post, you include some links from your partners in the guest post and they do the same for you. And again, remember that this is not a junk link exchange, right? So you're basically collaborating with very authoritative sites in your space. And they also are doing the same thing to promote their own site. So every time you publish a guest post, you also are helping your uh, it creates a little ripple effect that links to your website. So, uh, you know, every time we publish a guest post, we have five partner links and a link to our own site, and our partners have to reciprocate those links for us. So that results in about five or six links from five or six different domains, which is extremely valuable. Now, over time, that helps trickle down uh, the link uh, equity and, and, and basically help your website become a lot more authoritative in your space. That's it. Uh, and, uh, as far as my whole spiel goes on uh, link building and outreach, and also um, uh, basically putting together the, the basis for the on-page SEO site. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, this little talk today. If you guys have any remaining questions or anything else that I could do to help personally, feel free to contact me uh, either on LinkedIn. There's only like one Farzad Rashidi, uh, I think, and on, on the whole LinkedIn, so I'm pretty easy to spot. Or you can just go ahead and email me directly at Farzad, F-A-R-Z-A-D, 
at respana.com. I'm more than happy to help if you guys have any questions. Uh, other than that, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and uh, hope, hopefully I'll hear from you.